Okay. So Canva basics, getting started. Um, hopefully, as I mentioned, you've downloaded that, uh, the guide. That guide will really walk you through the basics of Canva and how to use some of the functionality. I used to try to go through all of those basics, kind of um, you know, talk through them and have you try them. And I realized that it was much easier just to take you through the, the learning, um, the learning guides that Canva provides. They're actually very thorough and really good. They walk you right through everything. So I wanna show you where you find those first and foremost. I'm again, just logged into canva.com. I'm on a free version right now. I'm not on a paid version. The way I can tell is right down here at the bottom, I see the Try Canva Pro. If you have that, you're likely just on a, a free version. Um, you can use Canva on a free version. You're going to have a couple of limitations, and I'll point those out as we as we go through and start diving in a little bit. So they've changed the layout here of our dashboard, and they've cleaned it up a little bit, which is nice. I know in your Getting Started guide, it shows that you access learning from this left-hand menu, and they've now moved that right up here at the top. So it's right here under Learn, and we can actually skip right to the first one that I want to go to. Let me get there. And that's the getting started with Canva. Um, how many of you have gone through the, um, on the guide, have gone through the Canva starter challenge? If you could put in chat, if you've gone, Michelle's gone through it. Um, have any of the rest of you gone through that? And if not, we'll go through it together. Charlotte has not. Laura hasn't. Ron, have you gone through that? Okay, let's go through it then. Um, if you're able to and want to follow along, you can, um, or what I'm, I tell you what, let's do this. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how you access it. And then I'm going to give you, I'm going to kind of stop talking and give you a few minutes to work through it. Um, that's usually what I do in the live class. And then I answer questions as you're going through it and run into problems. So to access again, this getting started guide, you're going to go to the learn up at the top and then go to getting started. And what we're gonna click on is the Canva Starter Challenge. And when I click on this, it's gonna open a design for me. This is what it looks like when you open and start trying to design something. This is what your screen will look like. So what I want you to do here in a few minutes is you're gonna go through that process and I want you to open this. And to go through the Starter Challenge, you scroll down and you're gonna start with challenge number one and they're gonna ask you to change this circle to your favorite color. I wanna show you first though a couple of little hints. First of all, in the bottom left corner of all of these, it'll show you a hint on where you change the color, um, but I think it's easier just to show you and talk through some of the, the functionality here um, of what you're seeing when you're in a design. So let's talk about that real quick before I turn you loose and have you go through this starter challenge. So, just navigation on the page. I'm going to start up here at the upper left. And if I click this back to home, it'll take me back to my dashboard. Under the file option, um, I can start a new design from right here. I really don't come here a whole lot and I don't think that you'll need to. As you're working in Canva, you don't need to save things. It saves automatically for you. If you're ever concerned about that or think, oh gosh, I don't know if it saved everything, just come under file and next to the save, it'll, it tells me right now that all the changes I've made thus far are saved. And if, ever, if I'm ever in question, I can always hit that save. And then I can X out of that screen and my design is it's saved. And it'll be accessible in my dashboard right here. And I'll show you, we'll get into that here in just a little bit. But that's how the saving process works in Canva. It's kind of nice. You don't have to worry about saving it. Um, you know, if you're still working on it, you don't have to worry about saving it to your computer, naming the file. You know, it's all saved in the Canva, in the Canva platform for you to come back and access and make tweaks to later. I'll show you how you download that to your computer. If you want to download it to, if you're doing a flyer and you want to download to be able to print or you're working on a social media post, you want to be able to download to share. You do all of that right up here. I'm up at the top bar here. I'm going to go the opposite side of where the home was over to the right. And there's this little button here that's the, the down button. That's the download button. So if I click on the download button, it gives me a couple of options. 
under the file type, it's going to suggest based on the design that I'm working on, how they think I want to download it. Now, Keep in mind, if you're downloading things to post on social media, you, you don't want to do PDFs. You want to select either a PNG of an image um, file. So that would be either your PNG or your JPEG. I'm going to make a note real quick to create a little cheat sheet um, on file types and how why you would use them. Okay. So it's going to suggest based on the, um, again, the design that you're working on, how, how it thinks that you want to download it. If you want to change that, you just click here under file type to whatever file type you want. If I'm doing this for social, I might do a PNG. And then down here, I can select the pages. So I don't have to, I don't have to select all seven pages. If you're working, for example, in the marketing templates, you'll oftentimes get multiple pages, but you've only customized one. You don't need to download all the pages. You just want one and you select those pages right here. So if I only want this first page, I just click on the first page and then hit done. And now all it's going to download for me is this first page. And I hit download. Let it do its thing here. Don't X out of this. And then I can open this on my computer. It depends on, on what device you're on, where it's going to download to. That's, um, you know, you should know where your stuff is downloading to. On mine, it shows up right down here. And if I open this, here's my design. And now I can upload this to, I can print it um, to my printers. I can upload this to social. I can do, do what I want with this. It's now on my computer. So a couple other functionality things um, that I want to show you. This right here, again, I'm up at the, the top bar here in the middle. This is the title of your document. So once you start a document or start a design, excuse me, and you want to name it, you can come right up here and name it um, Starter Challenge June 5th. Is that correct? Is that the date? Yep. And now when you download it, that's going to be the name of the file that downloads. Be an easy way for you to find it in the future. The one suggestion that I have for you is you're in here, you're going to see over here um, next to download, you're going to see right here where you can print things. Um, you can download from here too. I could share this right to Facebook, right to Twitter. Um, I don't recommend using these options. Um, if you're doing things for social media, you really want to download the image to your computer and then upload it. And the reason for that is because if I share directly from Canva onto social media for Facebook, for example, or Instagram, they're going to treat it as third party content because it's coming from Canva versus if I upload it, they treat it as my original content. And what that does is it, um, that changes how Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, how they treat your content. They'll serve it up and put it in front of more people. They like original content. So that's just kind of a, a pro tip there on, on using, um, using these options and why I don't suggest sharing straight from um, Canva onto your social media. It's a, it's, Less clicks, it's easier, but what's going to happen is you're going to damage your audience or, or compromise um, your audience. Any questions on the downloading and how to do that? Okay, a couple other things over here and then I'm going to turn you loose on this starter challenge um, for you to do it while I'm here and, and can answer questions. Over here on the left hand side, are all of your different um, design elements, as I like to call them. Right now I'm in the first one, templates. And this is showing me all the template options I have. So Canva has, you have the ability in Canva to start with one of their beautiful designs and then customize it, change things, change out pictures, change the colors, or you can start from a blank design. You can do one or the other um, and you choose those right here in templates. So I'll just show you real quick, it's searchable. Canva was originally designed for real estate flyers and promotional marketing materials. So there's a lot of real estate um, related stuff in here. So if I search here for a real estate flyer, 
look at all these different things that come up suggested. You could do a design your own newsletter in here. I mean, there's just so much you can do, but let's look at real estate flyer. Um, it's not bringing up any templates because the flyers aren't sized for this. Um, this is a design that because I'm in a getting started, it's, it's a square design. If I was in a flyer, if I had started with a flyer size, um, it would have brought up all, all the different real estate flyers. But that's where you, when you're in a design, you can search for templates is right here. They give you some suggestions. If you don't want to see those, if that's clouding your screen, just hit this little, um, that little guy right there will hide all of those elements and the templates. That looks a whole lot cleaner, doesn't it? Next thing down here are photos. And you're going to be asked in one of these challenges that you're going to go through to find a photo. I think it's on the second one. Um, search for a hat and put, put it on the monkey. So when you get ready to do that, you, you're gonna go here to photos or you're gonna go to elements. If you want like clip art stuff, here's our clip art stuff. This is probably where I would find a hat for that monkey. But if you wanna use one of the Canva photos and these are royalty free, you can use these. Now this is, a, this is where you're getting into big difference between the free and paid version. On the paid version, you have access to millions of photos for free. On the pay or on the, um, that's on the paid version. On the free version, your access to photos is gonna be somewhat limited. So you'll be able to see them all, but you'll notice as I kind of mouse over these, like this one's free, there's gonna be some in here that's gonna, that will pop up that I have to pay for. So if it, see how I mouse over that, hopefully you can see that, how it, so it shows pro on the corner it would be free to me if I was on a paid version, but since I'm on a free version, I would have to pay a dollar if I wanna use this in a design. So just note that, um, that as you're going through photos and elements, big difference there between the free account and the paid account, and make sure as you're searching for photos, I can search for like a front door, for example, and tons of options here. Although most of, a lot of these are gonna be, this is a pro one, there's a free one, free one, pro. If I wanna make sure that I'm getting just the free ones, oh, those showed all, there used to be an option there where you could click and it would only show you ones that were free. They've obviously taken that away. But that's how you can distinguish between a free and a paid photo. There's a lot of beautiful photos for free. But just notice as you're just notice you're going through this, not just select if you're on a free version, don't select those pro ones unless you want to pay for them. So that's your photos, the photo library. And then in elements down here, I'm not going to go into this in too great a detail because I want you to go through this getting started um, first. But this is where you're gonna come, for example, on this second challenge to add a hat to the monkey. You'll come right up here to search and you can just search for a hat and it'll bring up all sorts of hats. Right down here at the bottom, you're gonna see this little tip and it'll tell you, it'll give you those instructions that I just walked through and it'll tell you how to get the hat from over here onto the monkey. And I'm gonna click, I'm gonna hold it and I'm gonna drop it right there and then if I pull these corners, that's how I can increase the size or decrease the size. If I wanna put a little tiny hat on them, that's how I'm gonna accomplish that one. So in the element, you've got a lot of things in elements. I come here all the time. If I need to put a line across something, I just search for a line. And then I can put a line at the bottom of the flyer if I want you know, a line underneath him. Elements are where you're going to find a lot of your design stuff. I will tell you anything that you see that has the um, this picture on it that looks like a big um, looks like a sky with clouds. These are frames. These frames are intended for you to drag and drop your pictures into this. That's what those elements are. Those are frames for photos. So I'll show you, this is a little bit more high level, but I'll show you how that works. So if I wanna put this picture into this frame, I just take it and drag it and it'll size it, snap it right into that size for me. 
that's why you like using, we like using the frames. If you're working with our marketing templates on our flyers, a lot of those are set up as these picture frames. So you keep the integrity of the sizing on them and your flyer ends up looking good. Your pictures are in all sorts of different sizes and go in different ways. Um, Laura asks, can you use your own photos? And absolutely you can. I will get there in just a second when we get down here to uploads. But you can upload your own photos. Um, next one down here on your, on your elements is your text. This is how I add a text box. Um, these are typically what I'm coming to. The heading just makes it pretty big. Subheading, it's a little smaller. And then your little body of text, it's size even smaller. Once you put those in, all of your edit options pop up right here at the top. So you can change your font. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of fonts. Again, some are paid, some are free. If you're on the, the paid version, which Charlotte asked how much is the pro version, um, they have a 30 day free trial, which is nice. And then after that, it's either 120 for the year, so $10 a month, or if you just wanna pay monthly, it's I think 12 or 12.99 for a month. Um, I use it every day, so it's well worth it for me to pay that $120 for the year. But you'll notice as I click on the text, that element, it brings up my options here. I can make the font bigger. Right here is where I can change the color. I can make it bold, italicize it, underline it. This changes the alignment. This would make it into all caps for me. This would add bullets if I'm doing a bulleted list of maybe property features. And this right here is um, a little bit more advanced, but this is where I can change. I can squeeze the letters together or I can make them further apart. And then the line, I can squeeze it together or make it further apart. So a couple things there on, on how to edit text. The next element I'm going to skip, that's videos. Um, if I wanted to add a video into here, that's now an option, but we're not going there with basics. Background, if I want to change the entire background of this, I think that's one of your, uh, yep, it's on the fifth, fourth page here. Your third task when you get to here is add a background. This is where you're going to come right over here to background and pick a background. Up here, I can pick solid colors. So if I want to make it green, I can do that, or if I want it to be a picture, I can change the background. You've got tons, again, tons of backgrounds to choose from there, lots of them. And it again, like everything, this is searchable. So if I want a water background, there's all the different backgrounds I could use for water. That looks peaceful. That's what I wanna be doing today. So that's your backgrounds. And then uh, Laura had asked in the chat if you can upload your own photos, use your own photos. You bet you can right here in uploads. Um, these are the pictures that I've uploaded. Again, I'm on my free version. If I flipped over to my paid version, this would, I've got tons and tons of photos. And then the other thing that you can do here is you can have folders. So I'm going to show you really quick what this looks like just so you can see on a paid version, how this kind of plays out because I've never done it on a, um, let me go back to learning here. So on my, on my personal Canva, if I go here under folders, I've got all of these different folders. So I have a whole folder here of all of our BHG logos, my personal logo. I've loaded all of these into, I've done the upload, and then I click on this, um, click on this blue, and I pick an image from my computer. I have no idea what this image is, which is gonna kind of be scary. We'll just see what this is. I'm gonna upload it. And then here, here's this picture that I can now incorporate into my design. That's how you upload your own photos. As you go through this in just a few minutes, you're gonna be asked to do that. I think it's on, um, this is where you're gonna drag a picture of fruit into here. And then on the fifth one here, you're gonna click uploads and you're gonna upload one of your own photos. 
and drag it over here. So here's a picture I uploaded of my daughter last week to do something for her. So I can upload her over here. And to change the size of any of your elements, you'll notice as I click on it, when it lights up in blue, I get my options up here. So we're not on a text box anymore, now we're on a photo. And my I can do effects. So I can do all sorts of weird things with this picture. I've never used effects. Filter, I can make it black and white and do all sorts of fun stuff with my pictures. If I want to adjust the color in there, I can. I can crop it right there. And then I just drag the corners if I just want her face. Hit enter. I can flip it. So as you click on elements, you'll notice this is where your options are. They pop right up here. Depending on what the element is, your options up here are gonna change. So this is your color option right here. So if I wanna change the color of that to our BHG green, I just click on the color and change it. If you don't have anything up here, if it looks like this, it's because you haven't clicked on an element. So as you click on elements, you'll notice as I click around here, those options up there change based on what I've clicked on. Okay. All right, I'm gonna stop talking for a few minutes. I want you to um, go to your internet browser, whether it's Chrome, Safari, whatever you're using. Um, let's get into Canva. Use your guide that I gave you. And again, remember that this, this learning, so your step one, it's not over here on the left anymore, it's now up here at the top under learn. And I want you to go to the Getting Started with Canva. Where did it go? There it is, Getting Started with Canva. And then we're gonna do the Canva Starter Challenge. I want you to go ahead and go do that. Um, and then I'm gonna stay right here. And as you run into challenges or need help walking through stuff, you just holler my, unmute yourself and holler my name. Um, and I'll try to help you walk through some of those starter challenges. But going through that, will help you um, as we start creating your own designs or manipulating the templates and the flyers that marketing has given us. Um, it's gonna help you just kind of familiarize yourself with the navigation and how to manipulate the different elements. So go ahead and I'm gonna pause recording. Okay, hopefully you all have, have made it through the um, starter challenge here. Um, anything, I know I got a couple questions in chat as, as you were going through. Did anybody have any challenges or issues as you were going through that? All right, if you all wanna jump back over here and follow along on my screen for a few minutes. Once you're done with this, you should be on probably down here on the last last page, page seven. Um, before we go out of here, I wanna show you something real quick, just um, more or less kind of a, a navigation type thing or, or tip here. <laughs> this design has seven pages. I can tell right here that I'm on page seven. As I'm on the pages, it's gonna give me a couple options up here on each page. If I wanna get rid of this whole page, I hit this little trash button if I wanna duplicate this page, I can hit this little, there's a little copy. If you hover over it, it'll tell you what your option is. I can copy that page. If I wanna add just a blank page to this whole design, I would click just the plus button and it'll add it down here. Or right down here, you'll notice when you get to the very end of a design, it'll say add new page and you can just add a page from there too. So that'll come in handy when we get into, when you get into the marketing templates and there are multiple pages and all you wanna do is get one page. Um, that's how you delete all the pages um, or all the designs that you're not gonna customize and use. So once we're done um, with this starter challenge, we're gonna come right up here to the upper left and we're gonna go back to home. 
And once you get to your home screen now, if you have not created any other designs, you're gonna have just this one down here in the year designs. So as you're working in Canva, and as you're starting to do more designs inside of Canva, where you find everything that you've worked on, when you log in and you're on this, you know, your dashboard here, you can do it, you can get to this a couple different ways. I can click right here, all your designs, it shows me everything that I've done in Canva. And if I wanna go back to this design right here and make some changes to it, I just click on it to open it. The other way you can get there, I went this way on the left-hand side, all your designs. The other way right down here is there's a category called your designs and it'll show you in the most recent which ones you've manipulated or designed. And if I hit this right over here, see all, it'll take me right back here to all my designs. And from here I can open them and start manipulating them. Over here, this is a big difference on the free versus paid version. Again, I'm on my free version right now. Um, right under all your designs is our brand kit, or the brand kit. I call it our, because I you can upload or add. You can upload, this is where you can upload all of the fonts. All the fonts that I had in that font, in that logo folder on my, um, my paid version, this is how I got them all in there and got them to show up on that side, that left-hand side under, under elements is logos. Um, that's a big difference on the free version versus the paid version. On the free version, you can add a couple of logos here. I think you can add two or three total. And then you can add, um, yeah, it's three. You can add three of our brand colors. And to add our brand colors, first of all, you've got to find those, right? They're in um, BH Genius. Let me show you where they are, BH Genius. And if I go to the resource corner here, I wanna to go to class resources. I'm gonna to go to Canva. And down here, I'm not logged in, so it's, let me do this real quick. Let me flip over here. Okay, so on Genius, if I go in Canva resources, at the bottom there's some links. And I've got for you in, in Google Drive this whole folder here. I clicked on that first one, that BHG logo package or logo folder. And I've got all of our logos that you might wanna use in Canva in this one folder for you. And at the very top of here, I have our brand color guidelines. So if you click on that, you can print this. But how you add these to Canva is you're going to add this little tiny, it's hard to see, this little tiny hex code that's right here that I'm trying to highlight there for you. Our green is the 339933, and this will look much better when you open it on your screen or print it, I promise. This is just a preview. Let me go back. I'm just going to share my whole desktop so I can just flip back and forth without having to... So to add that color, I take that hex code and I type it in right down here, 339933, and hit enter, and this is the BHG green. So this allows you, when you're inside of your, um, your designs, and you're on an element that you could make a different color, this gives me my brand colors right here, so I don't have to go and search for the right color green. It gives me a shortcut to it right here. So again, on the free version, you can have three colors. On the paid version, you can have as many colors as you want to. So on my paid version, this is what my brand kit looks like. I have our disclaimers, which are really hard to see because they're tiny. I have every different logo that we possibly have in here. And then I have all of our brand colors. Why I have two of those, I don't know. And then I also have our brand fonts. 
So when I click on my paid version, when I click to add text, it automatically, if it's a heading, it automatically does this Lado. If it's a subheading, it does Lado hairline for me. And if it's a body that, you know, where it says little body of text, it does um, the Remo font for me. Any questions about the brand kit? Big difference there between being on your paid version and free version. Um, for me, this that was one of the deciding factors for, for being on a paid version. We'll go back over here to my free account. Cover that up so you don't get confused there. Okay. So again, you get there on the left-hand side by going to Brand Kit, and then you can hit that plus button. And oh, it looks like they don't allow you to add any logos on the free version. Well, that stinks. But you can add your brand colors, three of them. Okay, the next thing that I want us to go through here is I want us to go back up to Learn. And this time, we're going to go through the um your we're going to go through the canva toolkit so i'm going to go down here to back to the tutorials i'm going to go to the getting started and you'll notice when you're in here there are all sorts of great um the ones that have the little play button these are videos to walk you through how to do things how to print your design how to save your design um how to save it as an image this is basically downloading it as a PDF, as a PNG or a JPEG. Um, how to save your design in Canva. How to download, starting from scratch, changing your fonts, adding or editing text. But what I want us to go to next is this one right down here, your Canva toolkit. And this will open up another one of those challenges for us. And this one will really teach you, um, as you go through this one, it's going to teach you really how to manipulate some of the um, cool things that you can do inside of designs with Canva. So I want you again to just take off and um, walk through this. And then let me know if you have any questions or any challenges as you're coming through this, going through this. But this will really help um, by you doing this, it's going to really help versus me just showing you how to do these things. So again, you go to Charlotte, I just saw you type that in, um, in the chat. You're going to go up here to learn. And then you can go to, um, if you're on the home screen, let me go back to the home screen. Get that. I want you to go to home and then go to learn. And we're going to do the getting started with Canva. And then you're going to click on the tutorial that's right below what we just did. We just did our Canva starter challenge. And this time I want you to select the Canva toolkit. So select that one. And then again, you're just going to work your way down. And they do give you a little hints about how to, how to accomplish each one at the bottom of the page. So go ahead and, and open, go back to your, um, your browser. And let's have you walk through that one. And again, if you have questions, just unmute yourself um, or throw it in chat and I will jump, jump in and try to, help, uh, try to help navigate things or troubleshoot some things. Let me show you, I wanna show you real quick um, on this last task that you just finished with the grids. Hopefully um, you were able to finish that one. So once you add a picture into a grid, I'm going to drag this over and put this in here. If I want to change, and I know that you went through this when you were up here trying to get the dog's face, you've got to double click on the picture and then drag it. You can do that same thing when you're in a grid. So when you're in a grid, even if you have two pictures side by side, if I just double click on the picture, I can then move what I want, or I can also blow it up so it covers what I want. What you can't do is make it any smaller. You're confined to either the height or the width. So I can't make this any, any smaller. If I try to drag it, it's not going to let me because what it, want, it wants to keep it inside that grid. Hopefully that makes sense. But you can, you can make it bigger. So if you just want that piece of the picture. Once you double click, you've got full, 
um, oh, hold on here, done. If I click on this, I can hit crop and I can crop this picture, which essentially does the same thing as dragging it around inside the grid. Christian, can you copy that page that you created, that template, and move it to page eight? Uh-huh. How do you do that? Yeah, so if you want to copy this grid, click on it. Oh, I clicked on the wrong, clicked on the text. Once I click on it, I'll see the corners light up here with circles. Yep. And I know I've collected that. Click, ugh. selected that. And I can, I, this is how I do it. I um, hit, once I have it selected on my keyboard, I hit control C and that copies it. And then I come down here to page eight and I hit control V and it'll paste it. The other thing that you can do is you can actually take it, I can grab a hold of it and I can just move it down here manually with my mouse. Any other questions about either working with the grids or the other, um, the other tasks that you did with this toolkits challenge? These will be, as I mentioned, um, as I set you off to do this, these are gonna be really handy. Just going through these are gonna be really handy when you actually get into your own designs or the marketing templates and you start messing around um, with those templates and trying to customize it. So what I want to show you next, and I'm going to go back to my other Chrome here that I have opened up, is what I want to show you next is how we manipulate, how you get those marketing templates that have been created into your Canva. And then let's, I'm going to walk you through how you manipulate those. So um, I am going to, there's a couple ways, and I've got a whole guide, a step-by-step um, on how to do this. And again, it's in, I clicked over here to BH Genius. And I'm in this Canva resource on this Canva resources page. Your marketing templates are right here. And I'm going to blow past this for a second. Right down here, I've got this link to that guide that I emailed you to download to, to walk us through what we've just covered in the last hour. And then here is a link to download a, another guide that walks you through with screenshots where you find these marketing templates and how you get them over into your Canva. There's three different places you can find it. One is in Google Drive, one is on Genius, and third is on KCH Agent. So it walks you through all three of those steps. You'll only need to do one. You only need to find it in one place. Um, I'm gonna for ease just go right back over here to Genius. So these are the templates that were created originally from marketing as they have given us new templates. Um, I put links down here to those, or we also put them in, uh, in the drive. So like here's a link um, to access the, the COVID, all the COVID marketing templates that were done. So if I wanna take any of these and customize these, I just click on these links right here. I want to find a good flyer one. Hold on just a second. I'm going to go back. We're going to take one of these out, but I just wanted to show you where all these different marketing templates are. And what I, I'm making a note for myself because what I need to do is just add links, quick links at the bottom of this resource page, all of the new marketing templates that have been put out. Template links, resource page. Okay, so this document right here are a ton of templates um, that marketing gave us. So you'll notice this PDF as I scroll through, I can preview it by just scrolling here as I'm on inside of Genius. I like to go ahead and preview this and open it up. So I click that little, to do that, I click this little button here. It opens, and opens it up in a new tab for me. And now I'm previewing all 20 pages of this. So as you scroll through this, the first page here, these are the seller buyer book, the customizable and the blank pages. If you want to add to the, um, you know, your bio to that buyer seller book. If you want to use any of the designs that are on this page, you're going to click this link right up here at the top, use these designs. 
and it'll open. I'll show you in just a second what happens, but it's only a link to the designs on this page, the, all the buyer seller book stuff. These are social square events. So these are sized for social media, for Facebook, for Instagram, for LinkedIn. And if I want to use any of those designs, I'm going to click right up here, use these designs. And I'll show you again in just a second what happens once we click that. These are the just listed for social, and this is what we'll click on here. But I want to show you what else is in here. These are some open house ones that they did. There's some just fun quote ones where you can go in and put your own quotes in to share. These are the Facebook covers that they created for us that you can go in and customize. These are for home suite. I've got some others in the polish your profile section that were done for realtor.com, size correctly for realtor.com and for some of our other websites. <laughs> These are all your flyer designs here. And then beyond this is a bunch of ninja postcards. Really, you don't have to be a ninja to use these. It's you know, stay in touch with your client postcards, right? So let's click on the flyers. Let's do this one. So I'm going to click right up here on use these designs. And what it's going to do is it's going to open a window and make sure that yes, I want to add these to no problem, Laura. I want to add these. Um, I want to use these in canvas. So I click on this, this blue button, use this template. And what it's going to do is it will open that template for me, all of these in a new design in Canva. So once I come into here, all of these things that you've learned by going through the, the getting started, the basics, the toolkit are going to come in real handy as you start using these templates. Now I mentioned, um, you know, this will come in handy, this delete and copy up here. Once I have this open, I don't need to create a flyer for every, with every one of these. This is how many, I think it's about six pages of flyers, seven pages. So I want to come in and I want to select one of these. This is the one that I want to use. I want to use page six. So I'm going to just come, I'm going to delete the other pages. That way I'm just working on one. So I do that. Sorry, I'm making you sick by scrolling so fast. So I do that here by coming and I'm just going to delete all the pages that I don't want. Now I'm just working with this one page. So I need to put my own listing photos into these. Again, this is a grid. They put a grid in here for us. And I really don't even have to take out their photos. I just wanted to show you that it was a grid. So I'm gonna come over here to my elements. What I've learned um, in these the, the Canva toolkit under the learning. So I'm gonna go to uploads. And if I don't have pictures of my property in here yet, I'm gonna go to upload an image. And then I'm gonna to go to the folder where I have images of one of my listings. Let me find it real quick. I've got to click through a whole bunch of stuff. I'm gonna to go to Wilson. So I have in here, in this folder, all of my pictures from MLS. I can select all of these at once by holding down the shift button and hit open. Christian, and it, we're not seeing what your... Uh, oh, shoot. You know what? Let me do this. New share, whole thing. Thank you. I didn't realize that when I was just sharing my Chrome that it wasn't going to show you this. Let me go back and do that again then. So I'm going to hit this upload and then I need to go find um, that folder that I've got my pictures for this listing saved in. So in here, I've got all of the pictures that the photographer sent me. Hopefully you're seeing this now. <laughs> um, I can either select all these. I do that by, I click on the first one. I hold down my shift on my keyboard and I select the last one. I've selected all of these. I could hit open right now and it will upload all of these pictures for me. So for the sake of time, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to select a couple here. Um, I'll just click on like the first five or so. Let's hit open. And you'll notice they'll just start loading over here for me. So it gives you kind of a status here 
if you're trying to upload 25 pictures at once, it's going to take a while. So I only try to do a couple at one time. So this one, let's see if any of them are done yet. That one's done. Okay. So if I want to use this photo, I'm going to grab it with my mouse. I'm clicking and holding, and I'm going to drag it and drop it right into that one. Again, I didn't have to delete these pictures that are already there. It just overrode that for me. If I accidentally just click on a picture, it puts it over here, but it didn't put it in the grid. So now this was something that you did in that Canva toolkit, right? So now I want to take this, I meant to put that right up here. I'm going to hold it down with my mouse and I'm going to drag it until it snaps into the right place in the grid. And then I'm going to do the same here. Now, you'll notice this picture that I selected, there's a whole lot of it that's not even being shown there. So sometimes the grids are great, but sometimes they cut off your pictures. And so I want to double click on it and I want to move it around. I want to display that portion of the picture. And again, you do that by just double clicking and it'll let me move it with my mouse back and forth. So now I've got pictures of my own listing in here. Again, I did that by coming over here, uploads, upload an image. I selected the pictures that I had saved on my computer and here they are ready for me to use. Now I wanna come down, obviously I don't want the flyer to say anything Greek. So I'm gonna come down here and just highlight this text and I can delete it and then start typing what I want. Blah, 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 blah. And then again, I can come over here. I can put my little property features here. If I don't like these check marks, just highlight them, delete them. Or if I wanna change the color of them, I don't like that they're black. I kinda of want these to be white. As soon as I click on it, Right up here, it gives me my color. I'm gonna change it to white. Now, if I wanna select multiple elements, I can do that. So I wanna change all of these check marks at once. So I am going to check one. I'm gonna hold my shift key down on my keyboard and I'm gonna select the next one, maybe. These are so small, it's hard to do. I don't want this element. This is hard to select these because they're tiny. I probably picked the wrong thing to try to multi-select, but I'm gonna try it again. Maybe if I go from the bottom up, it'll let me, there we go. Now that stuff isn't in my way right there. So I'm gonna change all of those. I'm gonna group them together. Why isn't it like, there we go. Oh, I still have to change them individually. Well, that's a bummer. I don't know why it did that with that element. Usually it'll let you do them all at one time. I thought by grouping them it would, but it didn't. But what grouping it does do is those were all perfectly lined up and I don't want to have to move them individually. So I want to move them together. I want that to be closer there. And again, I did that by selecting multiples. I hold down my shift, my shift on my keyboard and I just point and click on my mouse. And then up here, I can ungroup. When I have multiple elements selected, I can regroup. So any of these elements, you can come in and move and change around. And when I'm done, I hit the download up here. I want to download, this is a PDF print. This is an eight and a half by 11. I want to print it. To, dis to distribute as a flyer, I hit this download and then I open it up, print it, and I've created a flyer in just a few minutes. I know I just went through that pretty fast on the marketing templates, but I just don't want to overwhelm you with too many, um, too many Canva things. There's a couple other tips and tricks I can teach you. Um, but I don't want to over, overwhelm you with too much, so I'm going to stop there and I'll see what questions you all have, but I am going to stop recording.